1 Peter 2, 4 says, To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. This word indeed caught my attention. <clears throat> this is a word that in this text indicates the gross alienation from uh, men's gross alienation from their own creator. <clears throat> Not only was and is God's precious and chosen stone disallowed of men, but he is disallowed indeed. <clears throat> the Holy Spirit here wants to add emphasis to this to show this act of rejection. Christ is not disallowed by these men just by indifference or just by uh, that they have no opinion on the matter, <clears throat> but he is disallowed indeed. He is flatly and intentionally rejected, disapproved and repudiated. So this word indeed adds intensity as if to say most certainly, truly, Verily and with force, he is not allowed of men. Now, Jesus was not just disallowed in general. He was specifically disallowed as the cornerstone. He was flatly rejected as the means of righteousness and as the way to God. His miracles and good works were received, at least most of the time. But the truth that came from his mouth, the one that he professed to be, the one whom he came from, the place from whence he came, these things could not be received by men in the flesh. Now the Spirit elaborates more about the particular ones that disallowed him in the same chapter, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. The, they are the builders. The ones who are actually doing the building rejected this cornerstone because they have a project of their own that they're building. And therefore they stumble at the word. <clears throat> In other words, they heard something they don't agree with. The message contradicts their building project, and therefore they are disobedient to it. Now this certainly applies to the ancient Jews who murdered the Lord, but it is not exclusive to them. <clears throat> These builders are all who build upon the flesh. They are religious but carnal. They build on fleshly heritage, or on creeds, or on laws or they build upon certain organizations or other such works of men in which they may boast, and they are building something, and they are doing it in the name of God, but they reject the living and precious cornerstone that God has chosen to be built upon. They refuse and renounce all else and fall, they refuse to renounce all else and to fall upon him. This is the pride of life one of the manifestations of the flesh. But God chose his Christ and sent him to reconcile alienated men. Flesh and the things produced by it are not accepted by God because of its source. It comes from Adam, from a corrupted and sinful source, which is subject to and controlled by the devil. This truth, too, is stated and emphasized by the Holy Spirit in Romans 8. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Amen. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It's been said lately that we bring nothing to this table. <clears throat> we don't come to this table of the Lord to remember our problems or our sins or the things that we have done, either good or bad. God is not asking us to bring whatever we have and share it with him at this table. He's asking us to leave everything behind and come and partake of what he's provided, which is the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, his son. He has provided the remedy for our sin, which is forgiveness and being made new creations in Christ Jesus. For those who recognize that we have nothing of merit to bring to God, there is a real craving for this table. There is a craving to remember what Jesus has done, 
we come to the point that we came to the point where we knew we were going to fall. And we knew we couldn't stand before God. And we saw the stone, that it was precious, that it was immovable, and it was a foundation stone. So we said, I'll fall there. Better to be broken than to be ground to powder. So our desire is to meet at the table of the Lord and to feast upon the good things of the gospel of Jesus Christ. His bearing of our sins, his raising from the dead, his pre presenting himself and his blood in the most holy place to remember his work and present work of intercession and the promise of his coming again to receive us. We abandon our own works of righteousness and rejoice in the work of our Lord. Here we can gladly forget all our sins because we know that God has forgotten them. At this table we can again, if need be, fall upon the stone and rely upon Jesus, the chosen and precious stone. The table of the Lord is a feast of faith where we can reckon also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. The people that God has chosen come to the stone that he has chosen. Peter does not say that we came or that we ought to come, but he says that we are coming to whom coming, he says. This is something that we are actively doing all the time. We don't come for a visit and then go away and come back again later. We are coming continually. We are continually advancing in, in nearness and likeness to Jesus. And again, in 1 Peter 2, he says, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious." shall not be confounded. That means that this is going to have a very good and glorious end for those who believe in him. We won't be ashamed in that day. As we come, we are being built up a spiritual house. So there's a distinction made between the builders and those who are being built up. This table of the Lord is one of the vital ways in which we continue to come to the living and precious cornerstone. Now, we come here because of what we want. <clears throat> we want to be built up a spiritual house. We want to be a holy priesthood to God. We want to offer up sacrifices that are acceptable to God. Now, if you want all of those things, where else are you going to go? We continue to come to him because he is the way and the truth and the life. Our lives are hidden him, and to know him and the Father is eternal life. Brother Given recently related the table of the Lord to advancement. So this is one of those areas in which we advance at this table. That is in the cognizance that it is not by any of our works that we are saved. Rather, we see the truth of the gospel and are glad that we fell upon the stone and are being built upon him. The Father says that his Christ is his elect stone, the cornerstone the chosen one, and he is precious, and we say amen, amen, because we have tasted that the Lord is gracious. So we keep coming. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood drink indeed. For he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. And this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread of Christ himself shall live forever. Amen. Amen. Let's Amen. continue to come to this table.